Hello friends, welcome back. We'll continue our journey to the world of Python by looking at something very interesting called the turtle graphics. Now turtle graphics is this amazing part of Python which allows us to create graphics uh, using Python. So we have this character, let's say it looks like turtle or maybe you can take different shapes and we can make many many different kinds of drawings. Uh, just as an example, I'm going to guide you towards drawing this smiley face, right? But this is not the uh, sort of any kind of limit. This is just an example because there's really a lot of things that anybody can do. So let's get started. What exactly is Turtle? Now for those of you who are coming from the Scratch background, you might recall that when we used to open Scratch, we used to see this cat, which you could, you know, uh, write codes using these blocks to do things. And one of the many things that we used to do is to make it draw. And that used to happen from, you know, this thing called add extension. And we would go and add a pen extension. Uh, and the pen extension basically brings in a lot of pen functions with which this sprite can also draw. Now, in some sense, turtle is quite similar, except that it's all going to happen in Python. So using Python, we'll create a canvas and a character which will do the things for us, right? So sprite analogy actually works quite well with turtle. Now, if I go to ripple, for example, how do I get started? So, well, I'm going to say create, uh, as always, create a new ripple. But this time around, I'm going to use Python with turtle. So I'm just going to search for turtle over here. And I get this, uh, you know, um, uh, template called Python with turtle, right? So I'm just going to select this. And as always, I'll give my project some names. So let's say I'll call it uh, turtle turtle project one uh, that's just for this reference right so if i create this project now and i create this ripple so you know as always it does something but once it is done you will notice that just like the case of scratch we will get a screen uh, ready for us to work on right now we still do not see our let's say the equivalent of sprite but that we are going to get next right but you do notice that unlike the other uh, you know, template, which was only Python. Now we get a canvas here, which is the equivalent of the stage or the playground, uh, you know, as I used to call it in case of scratch, right? So this two are equivalent. Now, before I move forward, I will actually want you to pay a little bit of attention to what's written here. This, uh, you know, in this text here, it says this is a template ripple for Python with turtle, right? So one point here is to understand is that turtle is very much a part of Python, right? It's not uh, something that, you know, not Python, let's say, right? As and as I mentioned, as it mentioned here also, Python with Turtle lets you make graphics easily in Python. So primarily, Turtle is used to make graphics and some degree of animations. We also make some games and stuff in Python, uh, but you know, very graphical in nature. And it goes on to say, check on the official documents here, which is https docs.python.org library turtle.html. So before we get started with Turtle, I want you to Take a look at this site. So I'm going to just open a new tab in my browser and I'm going to look at this because this list of documentation is in fact extremely useful as a resource for us to learn about Turtle. Now, uh, there are in fact a lot of functions, right? As you can see, every function, every, you know, the, as, uh, you know, the Turtle methods are all available here for us. There is, you know, uh, there's a lot of things we can do. And, and a lot of them are in fact quite similar to what we have seen in Scratch, right? So it's it's really not that uh, alien to us. But as before, as I tell everybody, please do not try to memorize this. In fact, for all of this, for example, we can see uh, there's explanation and there are examples given, right? So again, there is really no need for us to memorize all of this because that's very counterproductive. Instead, what we should do is to try and understand them by using them, just like any other thing, right? Any other now, going back to our turtle program, I, before I, I get started, I'm just going to remove, you know, uh, so it basically when I create this ripple, some lines of Python code are already written for us. So we are going to talk about them, but I'm going to for now remove this portion over here, right? Uh, this portion is a little bit more advanced. So what we are going to do here, if I run this code, right? So now notice I just got two lines, import turtle, t equals to turtle dot turtle with these two brackets. I'm going to run this and let's see what happens, right? So when I run this code, uh, notice uh, something happens. Now, this time around on the stage, I do see a little character and this character is my turtle. This character is equivalent to my cat sprite in Scratch, right? So like, like we had the cat sprite. Now you can imagine thinking of this as, uh, you know, that uh, the, as the equivalent of the cat sprite and really it's going to do all its thing on the uh, playground here, right? Now, 
we have just given a command called import turtles but the question is what does import mean in fact we can make use of the word import as we use in english which means to bring something from outside so turtle is really an a python library however for us to be able to use it we must import this function now import is a general function it allows us to import which means include and execute programs from a python module into the present program so it's part of python all right but still not part of the present program by doing an import turtle we are telling for turtle hey turtle become a part of my project right now so that i can work with you now again uh, you know uh, uh, there are many 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 modules uh, in python in fact that's what give python gives python the power that there are so many modules out there that we can import so import is a useful command uh, we are going to see more and more of this as we go along uh, but once again uh, you know an analogy here helps so once again i'll go back to my scratch window you know i would give you an example of the same thing that we spoke about which is a pen extension remember pen extension is always present but for us to be able to use it in a given project, we must go and say add extension, right? And similarly, there's an extension which a lot of students use, uh, this extension called text to speech. Now, again, this capability exists in Scratch, but for us to be able to use this in our project, we must say, say let's say I use text to speech right now. So what it does is that it kind of brings in these, uh, let's say these blocks into my project, right? So in the same way by doing import turtle, uh, you know, we are able to bring in the turtle functionality into our present project, right? Like I said, import will be used very often because there are many, many, many Python modules doing various different kind of things. All right. Now, the next statement is, in fact, quite interesting as well. It says T equals to turtle dot turtle. And with that bracket, now everything here is important. Uh, you know, basically what's going on here is that by doing this particular statement, t equals to turtle dot turtle we are creating an object turtle and we are giving it the name t so you know th this could be a little bit confusing but really it's it's kind of again you know very similar to let's say what happens in scratch when we add in sprites right so for example if i go in here remember i you know you know this before that to add in sprites i can go and choose a sprite and you know uh, let's say i go and choose and say in this case an apple sprite right so apple sprite will come in here but now once the apple sprite is available here i i can imagine this as an object in which i can i mean through which i can make things happen right so this app uh, this apple object for example has a lot of capabilities uh, it can move around it can you know it can change its size shape and so on and so forth it can sense whether it's touching something and so on right so it's got lots and lots of different capabilities which we can think of as a different method in the same way we are creating here you know by doing this uh, this particular statement t equals to turtle dot turtle we are constructing a turtle object and giving it the name t right so now with this what's going to happen is that we can think of our sprite as being called as t now a question that comes up is that do you must you name it always as t in fact there's no need to do that i can name it anything as i'll show you right now if i let's say call it a b c no problem i can you know um, i can do this and i'm going to get this turtle right now uh, you know it looks the same but its name this time round is abc now this may uh, you know all of this may look a little bit overwhelming but please do not worry about it too much uh, it's like i said think of an analogy here is a friend for you here is a sprite equivalent for you which is going to do things for you right so just think of it that way however it's important to understand uh, you know uh, these nuances a little bit at least right before I go forward, I do want to highlight one point that if I were to, let's say, forget these two parentheses. Now, this becomes quite interesting. We will not end up with a turtle because, so notice if I did this, I do not create a turtle because remember, if I now, uh, you know, if, if because if I do not put this parenthesis, it means that I'm just, you know, I'm not making that method execute right which means that you know this method exists all right but we are not making use of it we are not asking it to produce its output this is in fact exactly the same as string dot lower with that parenthesis those two ending parentheses made sure that our method actually executed and gave us the output right so if we want this output to be created to be named as uh, abc we should go and make sure that we do that uh, you know two ending brackets and we do get a turtle coming up here right now there are uh, there's lots of things we can do with turtle but in this video i'll just show you how to control this turtle's appearance and uh, so let's just go back to the name t because that's what i use usually so i'm going to say t equals to tur t turtle dot turtle which means that i've created a turtle object and named it t now i can use for example the method called t dot shape 
Now, this is an interesting method. Again, I don't have to memorize this because if I go in here, uh, you know, if I go into the into the reference page, I can go and search for, let's say, shape. Um, and, you know, obviously lots of, so, you know, lots of entries appears. So I can go to the list in the beginning, appearance, and it says shape. Now, with this shape, I can figure out how does my turtle, I mean, I can give my turtle different kind of shapes. The choices are classic, arrow, turtle, circle, square, triangle. So let's just try a, a, a few of these. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say t.shape and let's say I say turtle, right? Uh, now, once again, I must run this code and this time you'll notice my sprite equivalent or the turtle is actually looking like a turtle. Right? It's no magic. I just called it. I just gave it a, uh, you know, asked it to run this method t.shape turtle. Uh, say I use the method square because that's another you know possibility. It's going to look like a square. Now, uh, in fact, you can do you can define your own shape. You can do a lot of things with this. Uh, for example, you know let's just let, let's just retain square. I can in fact there's a method also called shape size. Uh, you know so over here just go down a little bit. There's something called shape size. I can make this stretch along for example the width, the length. And also its outline. So width and length is quite interesting to see. Let's say I set t dot shape size and I call it let's say 2, 1, and let's say I let this be you know 0. Uh, okay, yeah, 0. Now if I did this, notice what will happen is that I will get you know a shape which is more rectangular than uh, uh, than let's say square, and that's because I just stretched this two times along the width. And I made the outline zero. Now the last one is really the outline. So let's to, to understand this better. I'm going to give it, uh, you know, uh, give my turtle another appearance with different colors. So what I can do is that I can say t dot say fill color. Now again, uh, these methods you don't have to memorize. Uh, we'll talk about let's say colors a little bit later. So I say I say fill a red color in here, and then I also go and say t dot pen color, which is the color of the outline. I'm going to say set it to for example blue right and it, 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 so it will be more interesting now if i see this so notice right now i get a turtle with blue color uh, with the red color uh, fill and a blue color outline right and now we can also make it a try two two and say let's say i make it uh, you know five right so in which case what i'm doing is that i'm going to make this square you know from the basic square shape i'm going to extend it twice in the width shape twice in the length and I'm going to make the outline much thicker, right? So if I did this, notice what happens is that I get a much different looking turtle. But really, these are you can think of this really as different costumes. In case of sprite, it's the same sprite. It's going to do the same thing. Uh, and I'm going to have to call it with t dot something, right? That's just telling you, okay, look, I'm going for this particular turtle, right? Uh, there are other methods you can also use. You can explore uh, with respect to the shape. For example, you can change the shear. Uh, shear tells you it kind of like distorts the shape in a little way. So, for example, let's say I say t dot shear uh, shear factor. It's called okay. So it just this thing guides me. So I'm going to say for example one. Uh, the mathematics behind it may be a little bit confusing, but it's just we can see the effect, right? Notice it becomes like a uh, like a parallelogram, right? So these are things you can explore yourself. The important bit is that we now have a uh, you know. With these two statements and with all of this setup, we now had have a sp sprite-like object available to us for us to be able to make it move, uh, make it draw, and so on. And we are going to look at this in the coming videos. I hope you found this useful. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.